Anybody play Battleground? Why nobody's raising your hand? I know you play. No, no you don't? Okay. Paul, don't you play? Battleground? Why don't you raise your hand? Don't lie in the church. Thank you very much. So, today's title is The Lord Needs It. Um, yeah. Let's try. Let's repeat, one more. Let's repeat once. The Lord Needs It. Look at your friend right next to you. If you don't have your friend next to you, look back and there will be somebody for you. Okay, and tell the Lord needs you. One more time, if you looked at the left, now look at the right and say, the Lord needs you. Cool, so, cold. Um, when I heard the word cold, the first thing that I could think was a uh, yeah, little gun that we use. Pew, pew. Yes. Um, anybody play Battleground? Why nobody's raising your hand? I know you play. No, no you don't? Okay. Paul, don't you play? Battleground? Why don't you raise your hand? Don't lie in the church. Thank you very much. Anyway, um, yeah, at first time, I was wondering what, it, what the cult was, but I knew the scripture itself, so... Oh, that's the cult. That cult is a little donkey. Dog. Puppy, donkey, colt. Understood? Cool. Hmm. So I'm going to focus a bit more on the colt. I mean, the animal itself, nah, not really, but the characteristic of the animal and the, about the choice of Jesus Christ. So what is the best person in your life or what is the best thing that you could have in your life? Let me ask about the favorite yeah, your favorite celebrity, singer, or an actor. Um, I, I think high schoolers and middle schoolers will have better answer for now. So let's see. Yeah, he, who's your favorite celebrity, singer, or actor? Kong Yu, BTS? Yes. BTS, see, I asked her, but she answered instead. She who, who's your favorite actress, actor, or singer? Eyes one? Yeah, Eyes one's becoming very famous these days. La Vienne Rose, right? Yes? Oh, Dong Ha, why are you laughing? Who's your favorite singer or celebrity? No? How about you, Siu? She's smiling, yes? Huh? She's becoming shy. I've never seen her shy. She's probably imagining Kong Yu or someone else, yeah. Um, like, it would be easier for them to give an answer, but for me, it's, yeah, it would take a time for me to give an answer, and it would delay the sermon too much. So I would say no. Um, like, <coughs> I would have memory of liking one, but I cannot remember any for now. Instead, I tend to care more about the people around me and also be attracted to someone that I, keep, that I can meet in daily life. Like, I mean, of course, if I had a friend, if he became a celebrity, fine, that's the case. There's one case, only one single case. But except for that, like, I like you guys that I meet every Sunday or actually I want to meet you all even other day than Sunday, but Semester started, so I'm at the Yongin still. From next year, yeah, probably I'll be spending more time with you guys, I think. And I hope, I do pray for it. Same, this same concept goes to the properties that I own. Like, I drive my little morning, the little car. Um, whoever got on my morning, see who you rode on my morning. Who got on my car before? Jisung, you got on my car, yeah. Didn't you get my car once, Nancy? I don't know, okay. Anyway, I like driving a lot, of course, and like, I like big sized cars, like morning's too small for me. Like, I would like to have a small SUV, it's like Trex or Tucson, yep. I didn't really understand when my cousin and uncle were talking about fancy cars, 
when I was young, but now I know. Well, the, however, the only one that I would really care is the little morning that I drive. Even if there's a Lamborghini or Bentley, Bentley is like a moving car, a uh, moving house, because the price of Bentley is equivalent to the price of my house. Wow, the, the house is moving. We talk like that all the time. But the thing is, even if I look at the car, I wouldn't go and clean the car or fix the car or take care of it because it's not mine. So I'd envy the car, but I'd say the most precious car in the world is my little silver morning that I drive. Um, that's, my li that's my little Kakato profile picture. Yeah, uh, I want to put something cool on it, so I was thinking about some words, like writing a poem, and that's, this is where I wrote, the best flower is the one that I have in my hand. The one that I'm holding in my hand is the best flower. Today, Jesus rode on a colt, that little donkey, little baby donkey. Jesus predicts that disciples will find the one and that would be the one that no one has ever ridden. Those who were sent ahead went and found it and exactly the same thing happened. And here's the important part comes. The owner asked, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. So let's try one more time. The Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. So what is so special about this little donkey, this little baby donkey? It was the pure one. It does not mean that you sh should go into deep mountain or forest and separate yourself from the whole world, from the whole, so whole society. Mm. But however, you should separate yourself from the sins from the world. Hmm. So I still remember back when I was trying to get into seminary, when I was deciding myself to become a pastor, my mother tried to keep me away from working in society with other jobs at the beginning. Of course, I still believe that pastors, including myself, should have experience in society and also for all our Christian members, for our life members. I encourage, you, I encourage all of you to work and mingle and be competent in the society and serve the society as a Christian. However, the fact that we should be really it is the fact that we should be really easily distinguishable. Like when other people look at us, you know, it should be visible that, oh, that guy is different. I don't know why, but he's a bit more kind. I don't know why, but whenever we are having an argument, yeah, he yells all the time. She yells all the time. She gives me more chance. When both of us are angry, she, she let me do stuff or he lets me do the stuff. It is pretty, like these days, the reputation of Christianity is not good as before. Still, when I meet my friends face to face, they, say, they tend to say, I like each Christians, but I don't like church. That's what I hear from my friend. Um, and I'm at least thankful that he likes the Christians that he meet because anyway, church is the body of the Christ and we are the member of church. So I think we still have the hope. So the fact that cult was never used means it was pure. Let's take a look at the scripture explaining about the purity and the importance of keeping ourselves holy and sacred. Let's read the first Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen through twenty. Three, two, one. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. 
therefore, honor God with your bodies. So, what is our bodies? What are our bodies? Let's read the yellow sentence one more time. Your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Yes, every single one is a church. There's one Joe church, there's another Joe church, and there's Claire church, and there's Shihu church, and there's Shi Wu church, and there's Paul. There's another Paul church. You are the church, you are the church. Every single one of us is a church. Then, we, I highlighted one more sentence below. Let's read the part one more time. You were bought at a price. Honor God with your bodies. What is the color of the word a price? Red. Because what was the price? The price was the blood of Jesus Christ. I told, I'll, I just shared that we should be clean and we should keep ourselves holy and sacred, but how? By thinking, by conscious all the time? I don't think we can. And I find myself, I can't. That's why we are bought at a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. The second point of the cult was that it was nothing big or fancy. Yeah, so it was like my little morning. Cold, look at that. Like, horses are usually taller than ourselves. I once rode a horse, I was here because I was short maybe, but even if you're taller still, horse is like that big. So its head is over here and it's the body that's over here. So. My shoulder is like their back. So I, I kind of had to jump and ride on the horse. Horse is that big, but look at the little colt. It's like its back is about the highest, the highest of the waist. It was not a full grown horse, but it was a baby donkey. Hmm. We think if Jesus used something, if God uses somebody, uh, we, th we tend to think that the person should be rich or competent or capable of doing something or very famous. Like, if you watch the Grammys or Oscar award, I remember my favorite actor who was the Star Lord, uh, the Chris Pratt, yes, from the Avengers. Yes, Chris Pratt from the Avengers. He was spreading the word of gospel in front of the ceremony. And I was like, whoa, I hope I become more famous like that. Or all other Christian comedians or actor, actress, like if they get on the stage and say, oh, firstly, I thank God, you know, like I could do it because of God's guidance, God, because God helped me to do so. I do encourage all of you to be like that when you have an opportunity. But that's not all. That's not God requires us to be or us to do to be used for the great work of God. Here's a little parable that we want to share. Let's take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. Let's read it all together. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver. Some are for special purposes and some for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be used instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Um, should I read a slower? Yes, guys, read it together, okay? Let's see. So there were three, actually four, but anyway, yeah, there are four different kinds of articles. First was gold. Yeah, let's read the yellow part just one more time. Gold, silver, wood, and clay. 
Okay, so yeah, there were. It mentions that there are different kind of, so to speak, dishes in the house, and that is for that is used for its different purposes. As I mentioned, like, sorry, my throat is hurting kind of a lot. Hmm. When God calls us, He wanted us to be prepared with the heart, not by the looking. Because the, the features that we have, or the genetics that we are born with, or the talents that are given, or what we granted at the beginning. But to be, but to be used by God's great will, what, what he does require is a fully pure heart that's facing toward God. So the topic that I was talking about was how can we be used for the work of God? Should he, should he be capable of many things or really be capable of doing a great work? We should become the one who really fits the heart of God. First Samuel Chapter 13, verse 14, describes about the King David. And we are, going to we are going to take a look. So let's read chapter 13, verse 14 together. Three, two, one. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people. Because you have not kept the Lord's command. So a man after his own heart was the word or phrase that describes King David. When God decided to pull King Saul down and raise a new kingship, he found David, a man after his own heart. David became the ancestor, ancestor in the family tree of Jesus. We are descendants of Adam, and we are not older than Jesus Christ, so we cannot be descendants, but at least we can join the family tree of Jesus Christ. How? By the grace of our God who decided us to be. Follow your heart toward the word of God, then he will let us in, and we will have the fellowship together. Let's take a look at the scripture that shows that we will have the fellowship together with God altogether. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, will come in and eat with the person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. So when we look at lots of parables or the description about being with Jesus, many words are used like, <coughs> we serve as a servant of God, but also at the same time, we are, the so, we are the son. We share the fellowship together with Jesus Christ. And we become the family with him. When we, when we think of the word used, it sounds like he put, us, he put us into certain occupation and make us work, work, work all day long. Or maybe giving a certain reward, you know, followed by the work. Do you think you get paid enough for what you do in the job? Uh, I'm thankful, at least. <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, when, we, when I talk to my friends, you know, I hear that they don't get paid as much as they, as much as they work. However, what we do, like uh, how much we dedicate into the worship service or our daily life, doesn't deserve to sit with the God and also join the family tree of God.
just before coming here, me and the voice of life prayed together. And we shared a book. Yes, join your worship team or something like that. Worship teams, we also have a book sharing. Yeah, it'll be a great time. And we prayed for our week, our daily matters. And also, we prayed for Paul, who read the scripture today. We, have, we prayed God that he stays with him during the scripture reading. We had a little problem. The scripture was not on the screen. So Paul suddenly had to read all the way down, but he made it. Thank you a lot, and amen to God. Amen to God's help. Recently, when I prayed, when I prayed God, like, I kind of, I kind of remember that I was praying for, broad, you know, broaden my ministry and broaden our worship service. No. And also get our, get our people, get our friends, get involved in the worship service to build it up together. But the thing is, I was really confused about broaden or building up the worship service. What does it mean? And also, I didn't know that I was not prepared enough. And we are still being prepared by God and His great plan. Yes, I was looking at the visible, visible things that we can see, like things on the surface. Um, honestly, I was praying more for that. And it kind of damaged me up day by day because growing takes time. You know, even if we put tree and give water and, you know, let it receive sunshine, like, it takes about half a year to grow this little much. Next month, it's going to be, next month, like, it's going to be a half year since I came to CEM. It is important to work hard and hope for the better future. But the thing is, I, th I was thinking if I was thankful and if I was thinking if I was praying God that he comes into me and he prepare my heart first before I see any fruit or before I see any growth of the worship service. And also, I was thinking myself one more time that when I was pleasing God, when I was thankful to God, when you accept, when I felt like he was helping me, he was supporting me, I was thankful, obviously. But when I felt like things not going well or things doesn't go in the way I want, I don't know if I was really thankful to God. And I didn't realize that, you know, God gives us and lets us let us be in a certain position or in a certain situation or deserve, receive what we deserve when we are really prepared. Just like the donkey, I'm nothing big or fancy. In fact, I'm short and I will not grow taller, of course, physically, but indeed, indeed, I will grow up spiritually and all of us will grow up and unite together as one and get hold like the little donkey, like the little colt that's used by the Jesus Christ. As you could see from the animated show, people welcome Jesus with a palm tree. Yay, Jesus came to my town, Jerusalem. However, Later, those were also the people who put Jesus on the cross. The sermon from Pastor Oak in the main worship service about people making decisions between Bar Barbara and Jesus. Those people welcomed, shouted, sang songs, sang hymnals for Jesus Christ, was the people also put him into death, who put him into cross. And that was me. 
who was really thankful and was really pleased while God was while I was feeling like God was helping me, but blaming or pointing finger at him or like asking him why he's not helping me while I was thinking that he was not helping me. This went same even for the disciples. Look at Peter and Judas Iscariot. Peter denied Jesus and Judas is Judas denied Jesus and hung himself, killed himself in the end. It's not here when we can find ourselves if we are true followers and if we are the true worshipers. But it is, our af it is after the worship service and our weekdays that we can really see if we are real, true followers of Jesus Christ. Also, it is not done by little oath or promise that we shout out. God, I will follow you. I will not deny you. That's what Peter did. And Peter also couldn't stop from denying Jesus in front of a little girl. But holding, holding on to God is the only way that we can remain as a true follower or be true. And do not betray, fall against Jesus and God. While preparing this week's sermon, it was really hard for me to do because it does hurt. It does hurt that scripture actually scratch up tears up my heart uh, instead of yours. This year, I promised God that I will go with the Gospel of Luke through the whole year. And sometimes whenever I face this kind of scripture that makes me hurt, I sometimes want to skip it. But just as I mentioned from the last week, when we face the sin, we have two choices, denying it or admitting it and let the word and let the great will of God control me. As I said, it's going to hurt little at the time, but it didn't make me into a great person. It didn't make me closer to God. And it didn't make us be more like Jesus. I just told you, every one of you is a little church. Paul Church, Paul Church 1, Paul Church 2, Grace Church, who prayed for us, Jisung Church. Yes. We are the body of Christ. Once God chose us, once God pick up, picks up us, and when He tries to use us, He builds up. And when you are hold by Him, now we are prepared. Not because of what we've done, but because of His grace that He chose us. Please pray that we become the chosen one. And let that lead our life. Let us pray and let me summarize up the sermon by the prayer.